Welcome to Rally Poland and welcome to day four. We have seen some incredible action on the seventh round of the FIA World Rally Championship. Super fast stages, the highest average kilometers per hour of the year so far. And a little bit of drama. Myself, Max Williams and Julian Porter will talk you through the final day here in Poland, but uh, let's take a little bit of a recap on what's gone on so far. It's the base for the rally then, the town of Mikawaiki, filled with tens of thousands of rally fans for the weekend. Here's our world champion, Sebastian Auger, in a bit of a six-gear moment. He's in the lead as we head into the final day. His teammate, Andreas Mikkelsen, all doing exactly the same thing. Yari Matilapvila in the same stage, going straight on. At a 90 left junction, that was about to repeat itself for several of our drivers. It's a very slippery section over some cobblestones. Many, many drivers did exactly the same thing. I think it was eight out of the 12 or something in here. Elvin Evans. You hear the rocky hit there. That removed the front left wheel off the Ford Fiesta, and that was it. Game over. He will return today, though. Flat left, okay. And... Oh. A face of action needed by Chris Vick and Paul Nagel at that big tip, taking to the field because it was the softer target. It would, unfortunately, though, that little moment cause them a puncture. He knew where the exit was, though, didn't he? Good escape route plan. Here's Latvala, all kinds of dramas for Yari Matty. There, Chris Meek, with that punch you were talking about, Bex obviously overtaking Chris in the stage. Chris selecting not to stop and change it. And we'll recognize this. That is Evans's rock, and that is the front suspension strut top mount of a Volkswagen Polo sticking up through the bonnet. Listen for the sound, there it is. That took a wheel off, then sent Osberg into a roll, and it was completely game over for the Norwegian. Damaged the roll cage would mean he would go no further. Local hero, Robert Kavitsa. He hit another rock, which removed... And another one, which removed the right rear wheel of the Ford Fiesta. He will return under Super Rally, so that the fans can cheer him on for another day's rallying action. Photo op. Yes, big photo ops. Look at that rear suspension, a tyre off it as well. But you know, earlier on in the day I heard that uh, that had caused some other problems. Apparently other drivers had hit it. But the final stage of yesterday, well, the final proper stage of yesterday, stage 19, which was happening whilst the oldest drama was going on. Andreas Mickelson dropping 30 odd seconds with a brake issue. Not what he really needed at all. Sitting in second position, remember, he'd been battling away with Sebastian Auger throughout the weekend, trading the lead, tenths of seconds, but Auger had started to extend the lead over the morning test. Five kilometers into the 35k stage, Mickelson lost the brakes. Andreas, you've been uh, losing time through the stage, the front discs are glowing, what's the problem? No brakes, no brakes. Um, not easy <laughs> when the, you touch the pedal and it goes straight to the floor. And when the stage is fast like this, it doesn't bring a lot of confidence. So. It's the Hyundai of uh, Juho Hannan, and he was really struggling through day three's afternoon because of the wheel, the steering wheel alignment wasn't correct, was causing all kinds of problems for him. That's it. Basically, when I looked at the car, uh, when it was meant to be like dead central at 12 o'clock, the steering wheel was at about 10 o'clock. And he said it was all right on the fast stuff once he got it settled and he knew where the steering wheel needed to be. But in the tight, twisty corners, he was taking a tenth or two to reset himself and work out where it was meant to be. You heard disappointment, obviously, this afternoon with the steering wheel being out of line. How badly did that affect you in here? I mean, that's 20 seconds on Thierry. Uh, as long as it's 
fast, it's okay, but on the ruts and tight corners, I'm turning so lot. And no confidence and no, no idea where the wheels are when they are straight. So it was, had to slow down so many times on the exit that just settled down the car before the straight. So it, it, was, it was quite difficult. Now this is Miko Havenen struggling throughout the weekend. He said he'd done, well, not a successful recce. His pace notes just simply were not quick enough, Jules. I have to say, I've not known a driver have so many problems for such a long time. You might have the odd stage where uh, my pace notes weren't very good, but say Miko, he was every stage. Yari Matilatvila sensed and smelt that he could potentially climb his way back up sixth place coming at this stage. He was trying to get to the top three. It wasn't so far away. And this was what we'd call a lively ride through this stage. Yeah, a big push in there to end the day on the gravel. I, 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 did, I did what I could. I just absolutely as much as I can for the rats. I didn't care about the car. Once we hit so hard to the, to the, to the sump car that we were flying, and I thought we were going to go roll over, but uh, no worries. Uh, came to the junction and everything okay. So now I didn't care. Just go on and attack. Now that is what you call an animated Yari Ratti Latvala at the stage end. OGA's lead then going into the final day over a minute over Mickelson with Thierry Neuville in third, but many drivers knocking on the door of that third position. At the end of the uh, top ten then Chris Meek in ninth making his way up. He climbed one position in the afternoon stages and was had his target set on Henning Solberg. Four stages would make up the final day then almost 50 kilometers. And the rain was starting to fall. Not pleasant conditions out there. Now, these stages were already run. We'd seen them run on Thursday, these opening two. Chris Meek then trying to make his way further up the leaderboard, targeting seventh, Jules. As it obviously, Chris has been up and down. Remember, he was as high as third overall at one point, and then the problems. Here's Hervin and up to 1.30 this morning, watching in-car camera videos, him and Yamo, were they going to be able to do anything about it on this final day? They had Yari Matti just behind, pushing hard. And they were hoping they could get to third. Here's Kubica then. Obviously, Robert back after his dramas of yesterday. Out for the fans today. And for a little bit of experience. And I suspect some fun. How can you not have fun on these stages? Look at them. Running out of order. Problem in the service. What exactly was that? Uh, we have uh, alternator alarm, so we prefer to change it as we are uh, yeah, doing super uh, rally too. So there is, uh, yeah, uh, we prefer to change it for precautions reasons. I was there in that service when they were changing the alternator. Keen to obviously get out as quickly as possible. The boys did a good job in that. Here's Thierry Neuville. He is in third position, but well aware that there are plenty of drivers behind. Keen to take his spot. But he's keeping up a good charge. He's not letting them in. Also not very happy about something, which we're about to find Dude, out. First stage on the final morning and uh, really close between you and Miko. So uh, kind of level stalemate after that one. Yeah, I have to say, a uh, nice strategy from M Sport to put Kubica just in front of the road. Unlucky for them, it was not enough rain, so uh, he just made a cleaner line for me, and uh, I could really benefit from that, so thanks to them. Obviously Controversial! He thought, that, he thought that was a bit of a strategy, didn't he? He had a fire in his belly, Thierry <laughs> Newville, this morning. Here's a man who did have a fire in his belly. Yari Mati Latvala, where could he climb to? My word, that was quick. <laughs> Team boss Jos Capito told him to hammer it. Go and show the boys who's boss out there. Those, that was the quote from Capito. I felt that I did a lot better than in the first time I threw the states. Now I see that my notes were too careful on the, in the beginning of the rally. And I really pushed hard. I pushed hard. Not it was not as, as comfortable as, as yesterday, because yesterday's stages, I know, were better. I really, really dried, but I think the road is also getting very, very soft, and it's asking a lot for the power. So interesting to see how the boys are finding it. 
There we go then. Ogier continuing to lead, obviously, but Yari Mati Latvala into fifth position, only 13 behind Heaven and Heaven and still 10 behind Newville. So it's still game on for that third position. That's it. Hannah and dropping down that position and down into sixth place. And that fight continues. Stage 22, 17.24 Ks long. Let's see what can go on in that battle in and around us. Doesn't matter about the right. I'm loving those sunglasses. Look at those. I could see you in a set of them. Here's Chris Meek then. Keen, as I said earlier, to make his way up to seventh position. That's the uh, place occupied by Hayden Padden. Really giving it a push, Jules. As he mentioned earlier, running as high as third in this rally. The pace is there from Meek. The pace is there for Chris Meek. And the pace is there for Yari Matti Latvala as well. A little bit of tarmac then onto the gravel. This section down here really fast as they used on Thursday. So we'll have a cleanish line. We'll have some ruts in it as well. Lapla's chasing down this man then, Miko Havenen. Miko's got to give it his all here to protect that position from Latvala because Latvala is charging through these stages. Someone else charging is Thierry Nuvillis. He's just eking out each stage. Just a little bit of an advantage over Herven, which is exactly what he needs to do. It's not very much a couple of tenths here, a couple of seconds there, but it's going in the right direction and no one is getting near him. Third place up for grabs. We saw them in third place in Mexico. But this one is on pace and performance. He's got people hunting him down, and he's keeping ahead of them. This man's got no worries. Absolutely. There's no one ahead of him. And he's got a comfortable cushion of time as well, Sebastian Ogier. He doesn't need to push here. He can conserve tyres because, of course, the power stage is uh, looming. Final stage of the event for those extra drivers' points. A little, little bit of a moment. He didn't mention that uh, when he was talking to us after the rally was finished. For Roger, though, it is a Sunday drive out there, Jules, really. He has no pressure behind. But all the same, he can't make a mistake. Both him and Andreas more than aware of that. The fight, though, continues on for that third position. It's Neuville third at the moment, then it's Herman and 13.2 behind. Latvala is now eight behind. Hannon just starting to drop down to sixth with Meek now up to seventh. Z